It was the revenge game we were all waiting for. Matt Duchesne, a four-point night as the Dallas Stars destroy the Nashville Predators. Let's celebrate this win next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Oh my goodness, the Dallas Stars. That was a bit too easy. A season high, nine goals in Nashville to completely demolish the Predators by a final score of 9-2 to two in their own building to finish off the season series. And oh, it was so, so sweet for Matt. Duchesne, a four-point night, including a couple of goals. We touched on it yesterday in the Shooting Stars segment. It was bound to happen. The revenge game, he had not gotten it yet, and you could tell the jubilation, the celebration of the few goals he had showed you how much it meant to Matt Duchesne to sort of stick it to the Nashville Predators. Wow, so much to get into today. Also, Niels Lundqvist, left the game with an injury, took a hit up high in just his second shift of the game. How does that play in to how the Dallas Stars want to move forward, especially with the trade deadline looming? And then the Stars have to take on Edmonton here to finish off the week tomorrow at home. So some good, good stuff and tons to get into today. Hope you're having a wonderful week. That was a ton of fun (laughs) from start to finish. It was a dominating performance. And yeah, Duchesne was great. Obviously, the the stars up and down were phenomenal. And it felt really easy. (laughs) And it was a combination of Nashville did not show up in the first 20 minutes. The stars outshot Nashville 18 to 1 in the first period. 18-1. 18-1. to And they outscored him 4 to nothing. Steele started off the, uh, the explosion offensively, and then it was just an onslaught from there. It was really, really impressive up and down the lineup. Dallas just straight up was the better team and just wanted it more. Nashville came into the game already struggling, trying to find themselves, trying to push themselves into a playoff spot. And I think the Stars kind of answered the question for them that they're not going to be a playoff team this year. I I think that's kind of the the nail in the coffin. And like I said, it's it's a combination of both. The Stars just played really, really good last night, and Nashville didn't show up. Um, it, It was almost a worse performance in the first period than that Minnesota game back in January. Both of those... Minnesota games <laughs> and that's saying something because Minnesota didn't even want to be there it felt like and Nashville in that first period just could not muster up anything Ottinger was just hanging out only had to to make the one stop but uh, it was it was a complete complete beatdown the stars now have scored eight plus goals for the fourth time this season. No other team has more than two. They've also already reached 200 goals this season. It only took them 54 games. That's the fewest games to reach 200 goals since 1986-87. And of course, uh, the Stars went by a different moniker during that period. (laughs) Uh, Just, it was glorious. Uh, It was glorious from 95 just to see that <laughs> uh, you you could tell he he wanted that for himself. Also for the moms, the moms trip. <laughs> I mean, send them everywhere. They need them aboard the plane heading to Boston and New York on Monday and Tuesday after what we just met, uh, witnessed. Duchesne 
Picked up four points, as I mentioned, a 5.41 game score, which was the highest on the team. Delandria, oh, great to see him finally pot one. And what a laser beam that was. Delandria has looked really, really great. And that's a real positive sign moving forward because he hasn't been playing every day. And he has jumped right in. He's engaged. He's being productive three points last night he's making plays he's in and around the net front doing what he does best oh that's so great to see um that he's taking advantage of this opportunity it also allows now Dallas with the injury to Dodonov to think twice maybe about bringing up your young studs and Stan Coven and Bork I'm all on board wanting to see them but do you really need to this offense is just too deadly as it is without them. So Delandria may make that decision a lot easier for, for general manager Jim Neal uh, moving forward. Uh, and it's just, it's nice to see that he's filling a role and he's doing it just swimmingly. Sagan with three points, Johnston with three points. Uh, I, I mean, it, it was just domination all over taking a look at the the Corsi percentage in that first period stars at 60 percent in all situations at five on five just just dominant 14 scoring chances in that first period alone they outchanced the Predators 37 to 17 I would love to take a look at the expected goals in the game just because Nashville couldn't muster up much 1.47 against Jake Ottinger and that was at five on five in the uh, two periods that Otter played, 18 saves on 20 shots, picks up his seventh win of the season. He didn't have to do much <laughs> in, in the game, so not much to report on Jake Ottinger. Uh, yeah, should have got the shutout, I guess, but <laughs> it was uh, over before Puck was even dropped, it, it felt like, in the game. And they, they just were so creative and so willing to make plays for each other and constantly being direct, going towards the net, making plays. Look, I, I mean, I, I don't even have the superlatives to use. I, I'm out of them because it was just, it was on display. I mean, right in front of you, like this team has taken it to a next level. <laughs> I, and that's remarkable for how good they, they really have been all season long. They also get some help uh, throughout the, the National Hockey League as well. Uh, Colorado loses. Uh, Edmonton lost, which doesn't have an effect on the division. Uh, but they get help. They extend their lead in the Central they have a game in hand on Colorado, now have a four-point gap between them and the Avalanche. Winnipeg still has three games in hand, so the Jets can, of course, get right back into the conversation with a few wins. But Dallas is starting to solidify themselves as a top dog at the National Hockey League. And albeit, they may be the best team in the West. They may be the best. Vancouver has something to say about that. They've been really, really good all season consistently. But Dallas is making a run. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah, 9-2 to two against the Nashville Predators. Good stuff all the way around. Steele gets a goal. Smith gets a goal. Johnston with a couple. Power play struck twice, which was good to see. Miro uh, got on the board, too. Uh and uh, what a thrilling way to to finish off the season series. Saros did not have his best night. It was a, a night to forget for him. And, I mean, the stars were just littered, littered all over the score sheet. Marchment with a couple of points. He extends his point streak. He's quietly having such, such a phenomenal season. Duchesne is up to the 20 goal mark. Johnston's creeping his way there. Sagan gets to the 20 goal mark. This is incredible. 
what the stars are trotting out there every single night. And and they touched on it on on the broadcast on ESPN Plus about the stars front office sort of hinting at that this is probably the best team they've maybe ever had and maybe outside of the Stanley Cup teams since that team was littered with Hall of Famers. But it's by far, and I don't think it's very close, the best team they've had in the last 10 years, last 15. If you creep back into, you know, 2008, when they had a when they had a really good run too, like this team is <laughs> incredible, incredible. And I feel like I've been critical at points, very critical to some degree. And it's justified. I still don't think the defense is uh, up to standard of where I would like. But heck, they're getting the job done. They're absolutely getting the job done. Wow. Stars demolish the Nashville Predators. Season high, nine goals, fourth plus time. They've scored more than eight this season. Thought they were going to match last year's high at 10. They come up just one shy but I'm okay with it. What a night in Bridgestone Arena in front of the moms, in front of the moms. But some disappointing news coming out of the contest. Niels Lundqvist leaves the game early with an upper body injury. What does that mean for the Stars moving forward? We'll touch on that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, whether you're into power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. It's like Matt Duchesne. You put him on the stars, he fit perfectly, and now he's killing it. (laughs) Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, folks, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So Niels Lundqvist leaves the game last night against the Predators only after his second shift of the game. He took a hit up high from Jeremy Lazan, and it it did not look the best, uh, albeit. And the the Stars uh, uh, reported that he would be out for the rest of the game with an upper body injury. And it looked like he took an elbow right to the, the cranium. From from the video on Twitter that was uh, that was surfacing, uh, you can take a look at it, and it, it looks like he just took an elbow right to the the forehead uh, of sorts. And I was hoping at first maybe it was just precautionary, like, hey, we're already up four to nothing. There's no reason to to uh, rush him back out there. But it was only his second shift of the game. And the Stars, I think, were only up two to nothing at that point when he left. So very, very unfortunate news for for Lundqvist, who has been playing so well, so well lately. Actually had a couple of nice moments early in the game as well. We'll have to see what the official report is on him. Uh, but not not a great sign, uh, unfortunately, that he he had to uh that he had to leave the game. And now you have to juggle around. Joel Hanley can step in, so you're not worried about that. But you do lose a right shot defenseman who was playing with Ryan Suter. So you don't have that option anymore. Does this make the decision for Jim Neal to buy a right shot defenseman at the deadline? Because if it's a concussion or a head injury of some sorts, then who knows what the timeline's going to be like on that, right? And this is worst case scenario, of course, but from what it looked like, taking a hit directly to the head, 
not a great sign. Now your your hand or or you're forced <laughs> to to make a to make a move uh, with with the hand you're dealt. So uh, of course we'll, we'll learn more as as time goes on. But uh, I'm just thinking worst case scenario that uh, that Lundquist could be out for a pretty decent amount of time here uh, because head injuries, of course, you never know. You never know uh, what, what head injuries can bring. And uh, a, a, just a, a real, real crappy time for it too. <laughs> um, for, for Lundquist himself as well, not only just for the Stars, but just for Lundquist who has been playing every day, has been really solid and kind of fill the hole for the stars defensively. And now they're going to be without that. Joel Hanley, of course, can jump right in. You trust him enough. Now do we see the pairs get changed up? If we're looking immediately to some differences, I don't know if you want to stick Hanley with Suter. It's not the worst in the world, but do you want to put Harley back with Hanley, who have played together, know each other's strengths, know each other's weaknesses? Miro goes back with Suter, which you would hate to see. Of course, we all want to have Harley and Haskin in together at all times, but you may have to spread the love a little bit more here in the in the the immediate to to get the job done because you have a huge huge road trip coming up. Uh, of course, a, a decent sized game here on Saturday against Edmonton, which we'll talk about a, a bit more here. But you, you got. Boston, you got New York, you got Carolina again, some really, really meaningful games in the month of February because you don't have a ton of home games. <laughs> You're about to play your second one here on Saturday, and then you'll be off on the road. So the Stars will have to certainly make decisions. And depending on the timeline of Niels Lundqvist, Jim Neal may be forced to to make a move because I don't know if you want Hanley being your everyday defenseman come playoff time. I, I, I think you have to make a move if Lundquist is out for uh, a long stretch. And this is worst case scenario, right? I'm, I'm maybe going a bit overboard, maybe jumping the ship. We, of course, will know more, but head injuries, you never know. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it just, it, it didn't look the best. It looked like just a, an elbow right, right to the uh, right to the cranium, and, and maybe the the helmet helped uh, absorb some of that blow, and, and maybe it was partially a uh, partially a uh, defensive uh, or, or cautionary measure. Excuse me, cautionary measure. Uh, for, for Niels Lundqvist. So we'll we'll find out more here uh, as the weekend moves along. Awesome stuff, though, from the Dallas Stars in general. See if they can take that momentum into a game against the Edmonton Oilers here tomorrow afternoon at the American Airlines Center. Dallas Stars looking to make it four straight against the Oil. Let's jump into that conversation in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by... Camino Consulting. How would you like to get to know someone better in an hour than you would in a year? Understanding one another better prevents small misunderstandings from becoming big ongoing fights. We've all had that in our life. Sometimes we shy away from conflict, something that's been bugging us all day, and then it boils up. And then everything explodes. Sometimes you have to embrace the conflict, right? We all struggle with that sometimes in our lives. And now Camino Consulting, after providing more than 20 years of service to small and mid-sized businesses, helping management groups navigate conflict and onboarding new employees, Camino is offering a digital seminar for families and couples. Did your Valentine's gift of tickets to the game not go over as well as you had hoped because you really got them for yourself? Get the Couples and Family Online Seminar for 25% off the month of February using code Locked On. Again, that is a discount code Locked On for 25% off for the rest of the month at www.communoconsulting.ca or mention Locked On when reaching out for a business seminar and receive the first five profiles free. 
Be sure to check out Locked On Sports Today Stars fans, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. You can find it on YouTube. You can also find it on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is covering the top sports stories 24-7, including some of your local experts with Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Good stuff out there. Be sure to subscribe to Locked On Stars. Hit that notification bell. Never miss an episode. Shout out to all you everydayers out there. We've been on a heater with our shooting star picks. I'm going to spare you today. Uh, I'm going to let this boil over the weekend and not going to put the pressure on any one player for the Dallas Stars against the Edmonton Oilers this weekend, even though we have hammered it. The revenge game was so, so nice to watch from Matt Duchesne. And now you look ahead to the Edmonton Oilers, who are coming off a loss at the hands of the St. Louis Blues. A big-time win for the Blues as well. Uh, uh, yesterday, six to three over the, the oil. Of course, Edmonton has been on a absolute tear recently. They won 16 straight games. They finally got halted by the Vegas Golden Knights, and it's the usual crew, the Connor McDavid's <laughs> and the Leon Drysidles that you have to try to stop. This game is also on ESPN Plus, ABC, two o'clock puck drop for this one tomorrow at the American Airlines Center. These games are so fun to watch. Stars took down the oil in their first matchup. It was a while ago, I uh, I believe, too. I need to go take a look at that, actually, because I feel like it's been a while since they've played. But, yeah, Stars won 4-3 to three back on November the 2nd. Okay, yeah, just a, a day after my birthday. So, uh, yeah, a, a while since they've... Uh, seen the oil Jake Ottinger looks like he's going to go I think that will wade into the decision to sit him in the third period last night uh, Scott Wedgwood came in uh, relief did not give up a goal which was nice and uh, Otter should be ready to rock on Saturday which is a great sign as the Stars look to make it four straight their power plays really good 26%, that's top 10 in the NHL. They, they've been so much better in, in terms of defending defending and goaltending in general this season. They, they finally just got some veteran bodies like Bouchard and, and CeCe's really nice. Uh, Matthias Ekholm has been a huge impact piece for them who they got at the deadline last season. But Stuart Skinner in his second year having a really nice season. 24 wins, 11 losses, 909 save percentage and a 2.49 goals against average. Jack Campbell, of course, was uh, the original opening day starter, and his game went to just who knows. And uh, Skinner ha has stepped back in um, and uh, really rejuvenated the group. And this is a, a good club coming to town in another great test for the Dallas Stars. They have a ton of tests upcoming. Edmonton here tomorrow. Then you have Boston and New York on a back-to-back. -back. So the schedule does not get any easier. And with the Lundquist injury now and Dodonov, if they just continue to handle this adversity by completely outscoring everybody, then by all means continue to do that because this offense is the most lethal, I think, the Stars – have uh, have ever had so um excited to to take this one in uh th these matchups just are so fun <laughs> against these big teams mcdavid versus miro i'm i'm sure you'll see a lot of four and 55 up head to head against 97 and uh, 29 tomorrow afternoon speaking at number four miro haskin in with his goal last night scored his 50th career goal which was awesome that haskin in sixth goal of the year and his 50th career NHL goal for number four. So uh, good to see for Miro, who's uh, having a really, really nice season. Um, and he was, also, uh, he was also chosen as a top defenseman, which is it's no surprise here, but uh, they, uh, ESPN ranked defenseman, and he wasn't near the top. I'll probably do an episode on a few of these rankings, maybe next Monday or during an off date next week. 
to show you where Miro, and I believe they did goaltenders, where Jake Ottinger falls within these uh, position rankings in the National Hockey League. So we'll see what some of the peers, and I believe GMs and owners, also vote on this is where they uh, get this information. So some very, very good stuff. Well, um, I, I wish I could have a phenomenal key for you tomorrow against Edmonton, but I think it's kind of very simple when you play the Oilers, just do your best to stop 97. It's kind of impossible, but do your best. <laughs> and if you do that, uh, you're, you're going to have a much better chance to beat Edmonton. And, and the Stars have played uh, really, really good uh, against Edmonton in years past. So hopefully they get that. Uh, hopefully they get a really solid game. Should be a fun one. Stars looking for their fourth straight win, trying to extend their lead in the Central Division. A top five team in the National Hockey League. Stars fans, they're finding their balance. The Stars are finding their game. They're taking it to a next level. And the scary part, or vice versa, the exciting part, they can improve. They can really, really improve. They can improve. <laughs> yes, they can. And that is scary. Great stuff today. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff if I say so myself. I hope everybody had a wonderful week on Locked On Stars. A couple of wins, a couple of dominating performances from different players, just all around great stuff. An exciting week of Locked On Stars. Follow me on the Twitter thing, the X, whatever it is, Joey the Jet 19 Hit up Locked On Stars as well. Post and stuff on there quite a bit as well. Rocking along. Shout out to all you Locked On Stars fans. Always appreciate the love and support. Like, comment, subscribe. Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully enjoy a Stars win on Saturday. I'm excited for the weekend. Just hang out, take in some Stars hockey, and we'll be back and firing on all cylinders next Monday. So I will catch you there. As always. Thank you. Enjoy your Friday and have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. So long, Stars fans.